Hi everyone and welcome to this special edition of Ross's Tutorials, I guess we can call them now. Um, today we're going to be looking at InDesign. I know some of you are a little bit apprehensive about coming in and having to edit a whole section by yourself. Uh, so I'm hopefully going to be taking away some of the stress for you, answering some basic questions and really just helping you get started. So I'm going to open up the Freshers template, which you can find on the desktop of each of the computers in the office. Also, I have to say thank you to Irina for reminding me that I had to do this. Uh, it had slipped off the radar, and I apologize sincerely. But hopefully, we'll cover most of the basics in this tutorial. So, that's it. Oh, that's it opening now. Right, you'll notice sometimes it comes up with this thing saying a document contains missing links. Um, this is basically meaning that some of the pictures don't have a file that exist on your computer. So say you save uh, um, an image from the internet and you then don't have that image saved on the computer which you're editing on, you will have a missing link. It basically means the quality of your picture will degrade slightly. So it's best, as I posted on the committee page um, when I'm doing this right now, that you link all of your pictures. So I'm not sure if I have an example. Yeah, I have an example right here, Wallace Monument, perfect. So if you have this problem where you don't have the picture on your desktop, what you can do, I think I have this saved somewhere, but let me just check if I go on to my Facebook. And Stuart has most kindly been doing all of the all of the picture stuff for us in terms of graphics and things. So I'm going to go to the graphic that he sent me, which is here. I'm going to download it. Boom. That's it downloaded. And then what I do now is I click on the question mark to relink it. I go to my downloads and I relink it. Boom. That's it relinked. It means the picture will now not degrade regardless um, of what I do to this template. So yeah, that's it. So starters, we're going to be just looking at, uh, let's see, we'll go to uh, something like, well, we'll stick with the front page. Maybe it's the best place to start. So I'll just delete all this. Boom. Goodbye. So we have a couple things we have to do. So down this area here, if you don't see an, a, basically if you're, when you open up InDesign, it doesn't look like this. A great way of telling if it doesn't look like this is if it has paragraph and character styles here. If it doesn't look like that, make sure you go to Window, Workspace, and click Advanced. Sometimes it goes to Essential, but you need Advanced, okay? Get that out of the way first. Next up, make a text box. It's fairly straightforward. Go from the end of one column and make the text box. This is going to be our headline. Now, to get the headline to the right font, go to Paragraph Styles and then make sure that you're in your uh, the appropriate like section. So it's either culture or it's a newspaper. Front page headline for this one. And then I type in something like, oh no. The Wallace Monument is blue. There we go. And then what I need to do is kind of just shrink this text box so it's actually just kind of snug with the writing. There's a little bit of space. So remember to keep a little bit of space so that your words can breathe a little bit. And that's that. Easy peasy. Next up, we're going to add a picture. So. You'll see here there's a rectangle frame tool. Click on, my apologies, click on that. And then depending on where you want your picture to be, so if you want it to be down this column here, say you want it kind of like that, we're going to then, keeping this selected, click File, Place, click on the Wallace Monument, and Open. Now, this is quite important. 
whenever you're not using a tool, because it's quite easy to click tech, have text box clicked and be clicking all over the place with text boxes and not do anything, make sure you always go back to this little selection tool. Makes life much easier. So click on a box, try and avoid this circle. I'll talk about that in a minute. So click on the box, right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally. Bingo. Now, when I was talking about this little circle here, essentially, imagine this box that we've got selected here is a window. And this circle here allows us to move the object in the window. So if I click on the circle, you'll see that I'm now selecting this orange box here. I can then move the Wallace Monument around inside the frame. So just as a window, the Wallace Monument will move around the place. Okay? If you don't, it's quite an easy mistake to click on that by accident and then you're dragging the Wallace Monument all over the place and you don't know what's going on. Or your respective picture, it doesn't have to be the Wallace Monument. So there we go. To delete it, obviously just click on the box and delete. Okay? Easy peasy. Next up, what are we going to do now? We're going to make a byline. So there's a new sort of format for the bylines. So make a text box again. Cool. What I want to do now is click that selection tool so I'm not just, well, I do actually want to be still inside the box. But here we go. I'll type in my name. And if you're an editor, which if you're watching this, you probably are. I'm just really bad at my spinning today. After that, you want to highlight the words, paragraph styles, because at the moment I'm using the culture byline, I need to go to newspaper and then click byline. Sorry. For the bylines, what I want you to do is I want your name in bold and your title in brig blue, okay? So see that here? That's your brig blue here. Okay, and again, kind of shrink that down. So that's super. We've now got headline, byline, picture. Now we need some words. So I'm going to start from the edge of the last column. So you see these columns here? That's, that's a column here. All right. Don't stray into the other column like that. Select tool, get rid of it. I want you within the columns, okay? Columns are meant to have a gap between them. Give it some room. Right, now what we're gonna do is you can do this a couple of ways. This is sort of like the easier way to do it. So I'm gonna start, you'll notice that if I'm holding, if I'm clicking on the text box here, if I try and make a text box like here, I'm just gonna click on my name. So you need to sort of be, you know, clever with where you're starting your text box. Because you can start your text box over here. And if you want your text to go across the whole page like that, remember giving it a bit of space at the bottom. Okay, look at that. That's shifted all the other words out of the way. Why is that? Because it's obviously text wrapped it. So stop it from doing that. Right. I'm going to fill this with placeholder text just to kind of show you what I mean. Boom. Right. That looks obviously awful, doesn't it? Wallace Monument has not text wrapped anything by the looks of it, has it? See, this is where sometimes it gets complicated because it's selected the text box. So what I need to do is slightly shrink the text box a little bit so I can select Wallace Monument. Wallace Monument has text wrapped it, which is up here. That's fine. That's good to know. So I'll make the text back up to where I started it again. Now, we want columns in. So how many columns does this article cross into. As you can see that Wallace Monument is also causing me some problems when it's it. Ah, no, it's because I haven't put it all the way to the edge. Duh. There we go. How many columns does this go through? It goes through one, two, three, four, five. Okay? It goes through five columns. We have seven columns on each page. As you can see there's two taken up by this Wallace Monument. So we want the words to kind of go down here, 
We want them all to be in nice straight lines. So what we're going to do is get the selection tool, click on the text box, and up here, click up one, two, three, four, five. Oh, they're all in the right place. Hooray! But obviously it's the wrong font again. So what I want you to do, highlight the whole thing, paragraph styles, newspaper, and it's main body text. Hooray! I'll just kind of add in more placeholder text. There we go, look! It now goes around the text, it's in the columns right, that's text wrapping, so it means all the words are going around it. Huzzah! That's good to know. Now, you'll also notice that most of the time for Brig, we have a what is called a drop cap, which means that the first letter of the first word is really big. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the first paragraph, paragraph styles, and you don't need to do much for this. You just need to click on drop cap, which is there. Click the select tool because I can't be bothered clicking around in there. Excellent. That's the basics of how to make a um, how to make an article in the word in um, the newspaper. Uh, if you're fancy getting creative, I don't know. Maybe you want to have a spread or something like that. You know, you want to have up here. We're gonna have our uh, let's say the title is. Say in mind you want to have a picture that crosses, say, one, two, three, four, five, six. So three and three on each side of the page. So you want a nice big spread. I'm going to fill in my headline here. So I'm going to go to the newspaper part of paragraph styles, headline. Uh, a big one. And then obviously keeping on my text selection, I'm going to click and then I'm going to increase the size like that. And I'm going to make the box slightly smaller. Okay, and again, I'm going to put in the byline. You can select your byline font before you start typing and just type in Rebecca is going to be writing this one for us today. Congratulations, Rebecca. You have been writing about Alex Salmon's catching a big one. Blue. Awesome. Make that slightly smaller. And then I'm going to get my picture. So, again, making sure you know where your columns start and end. Going to kind of bring it in line with where your headline text box is. And you're going to make it the size that you want it to be. Okay, so now we need a picture. So, and fish. He's going to catch a fish. I, will, I bet you there's a picture of Alex Salmond having caught a fish. Okay. There's a very small picture of Alex Salmond catching fish, but I want one bigger than that. Uh, ah! No, that's still too small. Uh, that's all right. It's not great. That one looks like it's definitely good quality. So, going to save that to downloads. And the good thing about this picture as well is there's nothing in the middle that's gonna look strange. Oh, that's even better, look at that. Perfect. Hopefully his face isn't on the crease of the page, so you'll see when I go into InDesign, File, Place, and then I stick in Alex Salmond and his mate, fitting fit frame proportionally. See, he's kind of on the line so what we can do here is use this orange button and move Alex Salmon along a little bit so he's not in the middle of the page 
and then slightly extend the picture out the way so that we're filling up the gaps that we're leaving in the box we originally made. So you can see we're kind of like shuffling them along every so often but now we're quite close to where we had our original box. That would probably do you. I reckon you could get away with that. Remember when you're making, when you're selecting pictures and things, find a space somewhere on the picture. I'm going to make this a thing now. We're making it on the picture because it looks awful if we have captions along the bottom of the picture. We're going to have it somewhere up here. There is also a caption button somewhere. No, 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 there it is. Caption. Where did the picture come from? Don't just copy and paste the URL, but try and find out if somebody actually took the picture. Did someone take this picture? Mm, nope. I can't seem to find it. So what we could do here is we can kind of just tag the Shetland Times. So go back to our photo. Remember getting your text tool clicked and just type in credit the Shetland Times. Now you'll notice that Alex Salmond is causing it to text wrap. So what you can do here is I think this should work. Hmm, that's getting awkward. Well, basically what's happened is Alex Salmond has text wrapped it. And you can see there is the caption. And I want to make it in white because it will probably stand out better. And there we go. Easy peasy. That's all you have to do. Now the only problem you're going to have now is I reckon you're going to have to fiddle about Instead of being able to text wrap your text around Alex Salmond, because I've now untext wrapped it, you'll see I got rid of the text wrap. So now if I decide to make a big old box like that and fill it with placeholder text, it's going to go all over his face. So what we've got to do is we just got to Get rid of those boxes. Extend that down just slightly because I expect what we're going to do. Yep. And how many of those go through? One, two, three, four. Perfect. Four. Then we're just going to make some more text boxes. So there. And I'm going to finish it off over here. And you'll see that InDesign is quite clever in that it gives you little green lines all the time telling you when you're lined up with stuff. So, you'll see that my article has been cut short because my text box wasn't big enough. All I have to do is get your select tool, click the red button. Come on. Why is it not working? There we go. So you have to click the text box, click on the plus button, and then click in here. And it does it for you. And again, click on the text box, click the red plus button, and pop it in. And that's it. How many does this go through? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to be having to reduce that because we're going over the crease of the page. So you notice the crease of the page is a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to... It's a little bit of chopping and changing, but you can make something look pretty decent with fairly minimal work. Boom easy enough and then select everything in these text boxes make it main body style main body style simples I know it's not quite finished there but you know and obviously Rebecca's name needs to be yeah it's disappeared So I need to text wrap her name. Why did that not work? Text wrap her name. There we go. 
core. Ah, it's because they're both text wrapping. Right, get rid of that. There we go. That's it. That's all you have to do. And that's why I was talking about your select tool. You want to always have your select tool on because it makes life much easier. Now, you'll want to kind of maybe put something in here to divide to another article. Simple as click on the line tool to get the line to go straight. And a lot of you guys who are veterans at InDesign might be shocked at this. All you have to do is hold down on the shift button and start drawing your line and you can make a straight line. I know it's a beautiful invention and it works. I want to change these to black because I don't want a funny teal color and I probably want to make it a two point line and there you have it. You have your Alex Salmon, got a big one, spread in the politics section written by yours truly Rebecca McCarty with a line in the bottom of it. I know this has been a very long video and I apologize for that but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all later.